proposed uh, minutes from the meeting on um, March 20th, 2023. And Alan, I did not email the closed session minutes because we don't email closed session minutes, but you were, you know, there via telephone, so. Um, so do I have a motion? Does everybody, does everybody have time to read the um, open session minutes? Yes, I'll motion to approve. Second. <coughs> Second. Er, uh, all in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Um, okay. And then. Um, Alan, what's your vote? Aye. 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 You're the only one. Yeah, you're the only one. And then, do we need a motion to approve the session? I understood your motion to include both. But were you just. I need to amend that too. There's four votes. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Um, all right. And you have uh, a citizen comments. Gail, do you have any comments? I do. I do. Uh, Gail Bum, 5805, um, what to say when I know time is limited. I, I do respect, I looked at the Finance Committee responsibilities, you do have a lot of responsibilities, and I certainly respect that, and anything I've ever requested is really in line with that. Um, I'd like, I think there should be a spreadsheet for every capital project. Um, we had the spreadsheet with the ball fields. When things came up down the road, it was so much easier to see who did what and what we paid for it. It was much easier to get any problems uh, rectified. And this way, we don't have any spreadsheets for any capital project for the last 10 years. And uh, you're, it's hard then to know even what the total cost was or the, the, the various vendors. Um, and uh, there's, I would also, I've always filed a public record request um, about the breakdown of pay and benefits. In the past, you had an excellent one-page spreadsheet. Um, you're up to a million dollars in pay and benefits. And there's no, and now, through public record requests or here, you're not providing any information. And this is all taxpayer money. So I, I think that uh, the spreadsheet could uh, certainly be provided. Um, the other thing, a uh, big concern last meeting, you had mentioned concern about attorney bills, and I certainly um, understand that and I appreciate it. The attorney bills, um, I'm wondering if you had recommended, did this committee, you went into closed session, so I'm not sure, did you actually get involved with recommending the third law firm? We do not have a retainer. We have a very a kind of memo that um, I believe that the council approved. But if you're going to have a third law firm, I think you should have. Um, I think you should provide the um, uh, the actual contract, the retainer, uh, and and more details. And why did we retain a third law firm? There is no litigation going on. Um, the other thing about the law firms, the three law firms. Uh, one suggestion would be the other two law firms, this is an example where you have two law firms, two attorneys each, have four attorneys, and they're all working on the same thing and, and, build, and billing the town. Um, it, somehow get that under control. None of the attorneys are from this area. We're giving a lot of money to attorneys uh, that live elsewhere, plus you pay travel time. Um, I happen to think we have excellent attorneys and professional people in Greensboro. I'm sure they could, um, that I think they would have uh, been just as good. The other problem is the attorney bills um, are redacted and it shouldn't be a secret what's, what you're spending the money on. Um, but I, I do think I'd like an answer as to um, returning the, the retaining the third law firm for what and where is the retainer. What should what does what do the taxpayers have to, uh, have to do that? They have to pay for it, and we don't even know what we're paying for it. The attorney yeah. bills are so redacted. Okay. Any other comments? I I just like to, Don Wendelkin, thirty four zero six Windswept Drive. <coughs> On the uh, contract that was approved Tuesday, of when the last meeting was for. Um, I know 580 was mentioned quite often that you proved that 580. I think it was 580. But in the contract, 
Did they, did you, was there a revision in there that specifies that amount? Because the firm itself was three, uh, a variety of prices. And that was, to me, is confusing because if you agreed to that specific contract, you're bound to that contract. And uh, that was for, um, well, you know what I'm talking about. And then the, the, the lobbyist, I think, or if that is the lobbyist, and there's the, the attorney. That's confusing, too, because I don't think the contract or paperwork for the one that's supposedly, again, I'm just going to say lobbyist and attorney, I, there's clarification is really muddy. I, I don't understand it. I'm trying to, you know, just kind of get a grasp of it because I don't think there's, other than the paperwork that I'm aware of from the attorney, the, the fees that were mentioned in that contract. So I guess my question is, the it's unclear on how much is actually being paid for the attorney per that contract which doesn't say that you will only pay x amount in that contract and then the the, the lobbyist is that's the same thing because i remember i asked scott after after the meeting or right before we went to recess or into closed session that is there a lobbyist in here and an attorney he says well it's two different things that so i'm just trying to get a grasp of it that's all i got thank you Section uh, that that uh, he's referring to. I think these are valid questions. So you're refusing to answer yeah, the questions. No, we're not refusing to answer your questions. Question right, it's not a QA. It's a it's a citizen comment period. So That's my comment. Uh, okay. So um, we don't have any other citizens here tonight, unless someone at the table wants to talk. Um, so we'll move on to item number four, which is the discussion of the initial line item in the budget draft. I'll start and keep it muted. So um, first of all, for citizens' benefit, uh, if you go to the town website, if you go to news and notices, there's an item that says FY 23-24 budget development. Click on that tab. And there's a link to a PDF to initial line item budget draft for FY23-24. As exactly what the Finance Committee is discussing tonight and per the budget calendar. And uh, anybody can follow along from that. Is that, is that different from what we have right now? It's exactly what you have. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. I've learned if I need to look at it. All right. So, um, so it's available there for the public. Uh, we're going to go over to the degree that the Finance Committee wants to go over details. And um, uh, I'll start with the highlights and then the, if you want to talk about expenses and if, if they want to go through it every page, we can do that. But uh, just the highlights, the proposed Hold budget. Hold on a second, Scott. Hey, uh, Alan? Yeah, I'm around here to uh, I was going to say, if you want to go to the website where Scott was talking about, you can follow along. If what we have in our hands is exactly what Scott has posted on the website. Uh, and, and this is from that cover page, uh, hitting the highlights. So what we're proposing is a budget of $4,772,539. Uh, with a proposed tax rate of three and a half cents. That is 0.75 cents um, per $100 of property valuation of increased tax rate. So three quarters of a cent that would bring it to three and a half cent rate, which is what our rate was back in 2013-14 uh, and, and several years before that. And uh, the way we came up with that, because we had talked at the last meeting uh, about the potential of needing to raise uh, raise that rate is we kind of put that aside, D and I, as we went through the budget, and you know we're always focused on uh, the operational part of uh, our budget expenses for our revenues to cover that, and we came up a hundred and I'll say forty some thousand short, and. That really determined where that 0.75 cent rate came from, or proposed increase came from. And um, so, which was interesting because it put it right back at the three and a half cents that we talked point, about. A 0.75 um, cent increase 
would give us about an, another $148,000 in property tax revenue. Okay. And so, um, you know, that's the highlight of that part. Uh, the, the needed fund balance appropriation to balance the budget would be uh, $900,514.64. Uh, and that is if we, uh, if, if the 100, if 100 of the operational budget um, were to be spent this coming year, that's usually not the case for different changes in projects. We never go into the fund balance the amount that we've appropriated because we never spend 100 percent of our of our budget. And we'll get into the details of this a little later um, as you have questions. But big, the big capital projects, the biggest ones are our water initiative. Uh, and, and we've talked a lot about all of these, uh, our a &Y Greenway project, uh, the Bandera Farms project, all three of those big projects um, have considerable external funding, whether that be through NCDOT, uh, ARPA funding uh, from the county, grants, we have a lot of grants, especially with Bandera. And the NCDOT <coughs> grant that we have uh, is not in the budget because we're not ready at that point, but it will cover, just remember it, that it will cover 80% of whatever our uh, construction costs on the AMY Greenway will, will be. And, and then the other big project there um, or that's uh, actually not associated with any grant funding is replacement of, uh, we've got a deteriorating bridge uh, at the community park that we've been talking about for at least a couple of years, so that's significant one. Uh, we also have uh, the comp plan update uh, coming up um, and uh, then as has already been mentioned in this meeting, uh, legal fees remain a particular concern. Uh, what, what we have right now in the way of legal representation is our, uh, is, is three attorney firms, our, our core municipal attorney. We have an outside attorney that we've been engaged with for um, a few years related to the lingering lawsuit, uh, Nelson Mullins, and then we have just hired a land use specific attorney uh, related to the de-annexation threat. And then apart from that, we have two lobbyist firms uh, that uh, have, uh, that either are attorneys or, or much of their staff are attorneys. And uh, not every particular member of the lobbyist team, but, but the majority of them are attorneys. Apparently. And uh, so uh, that kind of sums up where we're at with that. And then uh, <clears throat> several dates still remain uh, after this point for uh, citizen input on the budget. And Dee, I'll kick it to you. And if you want to start at really page two with yeah. your handout and get some highlights and answer questions. So every, every year the uh, <clears throat> North Carolina Department of Revenue sends a, a revenue update about what they project our revenues will be and I always get that in time to make this document and they do uh, they believe that our sales tax and our um, mainly our sales tax and home homeless taxes will go up at least 10% this year um, so I, I have um, budgeted a little bit more for that um, our, our beer and wine tax and our ABC revenues have gone down after the COVID um, surge. During COVID, our, our alcohol revenues went way up, but people are happier now and they're not drinking as much, and so that's why that budget's gone down. Um, well, you get that, not for good on the Jefferson. <laughs> that's right. You need to hurry back. Exactly. But help me to understand that, because I'm looking at ABC distribution for, says, uh, Today for seventeen twenty three. So let's just take that seventy four number and multiply it by three. That's over two hundred. So well, we received that, we received half of it. Is that seventy four? Is that we get it based on something in the last year? Yep, it's based on so we so how the beer and wine tax is. It, we get one check a year, and so see uh, we act, we budgeted fifty six thousand. Um, you know, for this year, because we didn't know what that check was going to come in at the year before. It doesn't come in until May. Yeah. But it only came in at forty three thousand. So we don't. We, we you know we that's what we got last May was forty three thousand. We thought we would get more and we didn't. And so I don't want to budget much more than that because I don't think we'll get more than that. 
and the, the uh, ABC distribution, we get that quarterly, and that's based on the profits of the ABC store here in Summerfield. And so we have received, um, I think we've already received three payments. Have we received three payments? All, all, those, all those payments reflected of this year, though? Yes, mm -hmm. for the quarter before. So, so it's, running, just, it's running really behind. Yeah, if I say we're at the end of April, which this says through 417, and I say 74, if it does that for times three, that's still over 200. No, you're we've looking already at received, calendar year. You're okay. looking at calendar we're year. We're looking at fiscal year from right. July to this July. So right. we're already over three quarters through the budget year. We get every quarter we get about thirty to forty thousand, sometimes as low as twenty twenty uh, five thousand. So, you know, we've already we're only gonna receive one more, maybe two. I need to go upstairs and look if you want me to. And see that ABC distribution. So that's not so this, so this is not from January to April. This goes back to last July. That's correct. The seventy-four thousand goes back last July. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. 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 That's right. So I'm well, sorry, I probably was saying that. I asked three times. Is that from January to April? I thought okay. you meant the last payment that we got. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Okay. And so um, the investment earnings are running really high because interest. We didn't know what interest rates were going to be last year when we did the budget, and of course, interest rates are really gone up and we've not spent any of our fund balance in the last year plus we've already received the 1.66 million dollars in our ARPA funds from the federal government and that's sitting there earning interest so through March 31st we've already got we've already banked in over a hundred thousand dollars in investment earnings so and I don't know where interest rates will go from here but maybe a conservative estimate um, so then, you know, the, the planning fees, code enforcement rep, that's basically stayed the same. There's a new line item on the top of page, um, page two there that says rental income. That's because we have had someone move into the Bandera house and, um, he's already, he, he moved in April 1st and so he paid his rent for April 1st. It's going to be $500 and so... Our, our rental income will be six thousand um, dollars. And then the next section is our grants. So this year we are going to have, if we spend, if if we do as much as we hope we'll do at Vandera, and if we do as much as we hope we'll do with the water development, um, we'll have over two million dollars in grants. We've already received the um, water. I mean the. Um, ARPA grant reserve. That's why that's called a reserve, and the other two things are grant funding is because we haven't actually gotten those yet, but we will get them as we incur our expenses. Those are reimbursable grants. We'll spend the money, and then I'll send in an expense report, and they'll send me the money back. And that will that six hundred thirty thousand will take care of our ARPA money because we have to have that spent by December thirty first, twenty twenty four. So we're just going to go ahead and spend it all in this next fiscal year. Um, and um, everything else is kind of self-explanatory. Our, you know, Founders Day revenues, sponsors for our events, uh, park, the SCP park rental fees are um, community center rentals, shelter rentals at the community park, and the SAP rental fees is mostly field uh, rental for ball tournaments and things, but it is, there are a couple of shelters over there that we can rent does anybody have any question about revenues? Are you expecting those um, SAP rental fees to increase? In yeah, because the, yep. the bulk of that is spring ball tournaments. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, and then a lot of them don't pay until July. And then you know, we have a cool basis, so I'll recruit them back to June. Anybody else have any questions about revenues? No, ma'am. Okay. Okay, on to expenses on page three. Um, our insurance is going up. Of course, um, they they told me that they thought it would go about 10%. I'll look at my final bill on that until May. But, um, you know, we've added 
uh, new truck and we've added, um, they change how they're doing finance or finance officer bonds. So uh, up until this year, finance officers were bonded for 50,000, but there's been, you know, finance. Couple of embezzlement cases. Couple of embezzlement cases in other towns, not this one. And so the new bond is going to be 10% of our uh, final budget. So my bond, if this final budget is, is approved at, what did I say? 477. Um, yes, my, my bond will be um, 477,000 instead of 50,000. And I don't know what that rate will be. Um, so I just, we may have to amend it whenever, um, whenever I get the bill, because I don't know. I mean, it's normally been about $300. Uh, for my bond and the um, yeah, and the uh, council, y'all have a fidelity bond as well. So we may have to amend that when I get the bill. I, I won't know because I can't even fill out the application until until we get this together because I have to tell them what our initial budget is. What so, do they, do which, they tell you per like thousand or something? The it's even a new company. It's Travelers. So no. So what will they, will they, I mean, what, they won't wait until we adopt, council adopts it in no. June. So will they I can go do it on this a, mm -hmm. initial? Yeah, okay. they, they'll do it on an initial estimate, yeah. All right. Um, so that, that's a little bit different on that. Um, and our audit price went down <coughs> this year, and I'm really excited about our new auditor. And um, we, we did not know what to put about legal fees. We just, I mean, we don't know. We don't, we don't know how long this de-annexation thing is going to last. Um, I kind of hoped the, the last lawsuit that we have that's still active, that is the Teresa Perryman and Danny Nelson. I thought that was kind of petering out, and then I got a bill yesterday for almost $10,000 um, for just one month for that, that lawsuit. So I, I don't, we may have to do a budget amendment later, but we just thought 150 was a good place to start. Why would the increase in legal activity when you start where we ended last year? Well, um, I mean, we end, we we're ending to this year at 225. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you think about that, Mayor? Uh, <clears throat> We've only spent right at seventy thousand this year through March thirty first. Yeah. We're I think yeah. I, I think the one fifty is good because uh, we we're thinking that quite a bit of this stuff we're doing now hopefully will draw to a close. Hoping not on wood sometime around the end of July. About the DNXA? Yeah, and so there's nothing else that's pending other than the wind down on that other one. Yeah. So I think we might be good with that 150 going forward this year, uh, depending on what happens with the other. And if something happens to the other, then, then we have no clue what it's going to be. So, so we can start with 150 just as easy as we can start with 200 <coughs> or 225. Okay. We're hoping to see a pullback in that. In July. Okay. Uh, any questions about uh, governing body and professional services?